بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد It brings pleasure to Merkaz Al-Huda wa Nur to present to you an online live lecture that will be given by our noble brother and Ustad Abu Khadija Abdul Wahid May Allah the Most High protect him and preserve him The title of the lecture is Establishing an Islamic home in Europe. Ustad, whenever you are ready, you can start. Bi Innillah. Inna alhamdulillah. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiru. Wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min thayyiyati a'malina. Man yahdihi allahu falamudillala wa man yudlil falahadiyala. Wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa allahu wahdahu la sharika la. Wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد. Then it gives me great pleasure today to be with my noble brothers in. Holland or in the Netherlands today, the 9th of Sha'ban in the year 1443 after the Hijra, which coincides with Friday, Yom al 11th of March in the year 2022. So our brothers who have kindly invited me to just give them some words, some tawjihat and some reminders regarding the establishment of an Islamic home, and especially more so in the societies that we live in, in the West, in Europe, of course in the Netherlands, in France, in Britain, and of course each of these areas of Europe, and even North America, the United States and Canada, each of, it, each of these areas have their own nuances and their own dynamics in terms of living and structure. But nevertheless, the theme and the methodology, the manhaj, of living as Muslim minorities, minorities of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, the people who follow the Madhab and the way of the Salaf and the methodology of the Salaf, that many of them and all of us, we face great challenges living in the West. So I want to take some notes, bil or in summary, from the great scholar of our age, Fadilat al-Sheikh al-Allama, Salih bin Fawzan bin Abdullah al-Fawzan, in some tawjihat that he gave to the parents and to families and to the youth. So I'm going to take some benefits from him. So our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded the parents to cultivate their children, to give this tarbiyah islamiyah to their children. He has commanded the youth, likewise the shabab, with istiqama, and to have this tamasuk, to have this clinging to the kitab and the sunnah. So the youth of the Muslim ummah should listen and pay attention to the words of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wherein, Allah's, where, wherein the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said سَبَعَةٌ يُذِلُّهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي ذِلِّهِ يَوْمَ لَا ذِلَّ إِلَّا ذِلُّهُ إِمَامٌ عَادِلْ وَشَابٌ نَشَأَ فِي إِبَادَةِ اللَّهِ Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that there are seven who, who will be shaded on the day when there is no shade except for the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he mentions uh, the, the imam, imamun adil, meaning the just ruler. Then he mentioned the shab, the youth who grows up upon the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam singled out the, sh the, sh the shabab or the youth with regard to being from those individuals or from those categories who are shaded on the day when there is no shade except for the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would specifically mention the shabab, the youth, and he would direct advice towards them. As occurs in the hadith of Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wherein he said, يَا مَعْشِرَ الشَّبَابِ مَنْ اِسْتَتَاعَ مِنْكُمْ الْبَاءَ فَلْيَتَزَوَّجْ O youth, 
from those amongst you are able to get married and have the ability to marry, then get married. And whosoever is not able to, then let him fast. For indeed, fasting is a shield. So again, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam singled out the Shabab. Ya ma'ashir al-Shabab. In the hadith that we mentioned previously, wa shabun nasha'a fi ibadatillahi. A youth who is raised upon the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And likewise, Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Amr ibn Abi Salama, and he was a foster child in the home of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said to him, Ya Ghulam, Tammillah, wa kul bi yaminik, wa kul mimma yalik. He said, O oh youth, O oh, oh young boy, say Bismillah, mention the name of Allah when you, and eat from, eat with your right hand, and eat from that which is close to you. So the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said he would focus upon the children. He would focus upon giving them tarbiyah. He would remind them of their duty as they grow older. And this is, of course, Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam setting for us an example. In a hadith, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Abdullah ibn Abbas, whilst Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma was still a young boy, he said to him, young boy, he said to him, ya gulam, indeed, I will teach you some kalimat, I will teach you some words. So he taught him. He said to him, be mindful of Allah and Allah will protect you. Who's the Prophet sallallahu addressing? He's addressing his children, the young children. Be mindful of Allah and Allah will protect you. Be mindful of Allah and you will find him in front of you. And when you ask, ask of Allah. Asta'in billah, ask of Allah. So the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when you seek help, asta'in billah. When you want to seek help, then seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you ask, Allah, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The hadith reported by At-Tirmidhi. So the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would never neglect the youth. So likewise as parents, if we are going to establish an Islamic home, we have to focus upon the youth because they are the next generation. And we remind the youth to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded the youth. So fear Allah and do what your Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has commanded you. And our youth, that they should be aware of this. To youth should not be treated like young children. They should be reminded that they are from those individuals who may come under the shade of Allah's, Allah's arsh, yawm al so long as So long as they cultivate themselves and their parents cultivate them upon the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there occurs in a narration that Shaykh al-Fawzan, hafidhahullah ta'ala, mentioned that there occurs in a riwayah that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is amazed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is amazed at, at a youth who does not display childish and the behavior of a child. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects his youthhood from misguidance. Allah protects him from sin. And parents likewise, we are responsible. You as parents are responsible in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding the tawjihat or regarding the direction and the guidance of your children. Allah placed you in charge over your children. Allah placed an amana a trust upon your shoulders. Right from an early age, you are commanded to cultivate your children. Just as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, command your children with the prayer at the age of seven. Meaning that we are to cultivate them right from a young age, from the age of seven. So what does that mean? That means that you command your children with the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You command them with the ibadah of Allah. Which means that you teach them the you teach them how to make wudu. You teach them the shurut of the salah. You teach them how to pray. You teach them what to say in the prayer. All of this at the age of seven. So you must teach them Surah Al-Fatiha. You must teach them the tashahud. You must teach them what to say in the sajda. You must teach them what to say in the ruku'ah. You must teach them how to make the taslim. You must teach them what are the what is the mista, what is the key to the prayer, i.e. the tahara. That they must know how to make wudu. They must know where is the qibla. They must know how to make satr al-awra, how to cover the awra. All of these are 
things that are taught to a child right from the age of seven. But many parents they just leave their children without teaching them, without educating them, without teaching them anything of the deen. When the Arabs used to teach in the time of the Prophet وسلم, when the Arabs used to teach their children, meaning the Muslims used to teach their children the prayer, the children understood the language of the Salah. They understood the ma'na. They understood the ma'ani of Surah Al-Fatiha. What is the meaning of Surah Al-Fatiha? Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. So when a child is reading these words, he knows what it means. This is Sana and Madh of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Rabbul Alameen. That he is the Rabb. That he is the owner of all of the creation. It's Lord and it's creator. So the children would know that in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and in the time of early Islam. So they would teach that to their children and they would educate their children. So we say to the parents today that when you teach your children the prayer, are you teaching them ma'ani? Are you teaching them the meanings of the words that they are uttering in the prayer? Are you teaching them that? Are you educating them? Are you cultivating them? So this is an amana upon your shoulders as parents. So the salah is important and it must not be neglected and it cannot be neglected. And this command is not only specific for the salah. Rather, the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned the prayer due to it being the most important type of worship and due to the fact that whomsoever maintains the prayer, that he establishes the prayer, then he will maintain other than that even more so. Because the most important thing after Tawheed is the Salah. And that's why the Prophet Sallallahu when he sent Mu'ad ibn Jabal to Yemen, he said to him, he said to Mu'ad that the first thing that you call them to is the ibadah of Allah, to worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala alone. If they accept that from you, then inform them that Allah has made obligatory upon them the five daily prayers. So the prayer is the most important pillar after the Shahadatain. So if they are establishing the Salah, then by necessity it will be easier for them to establish other than the Salah, such as, you know, when it comes to the, the month of Ramadan, as they get older. So this will be something that is a part of their lifestyle, meaning that their whole life revolves around the ibadah of Allah. Five daily prayers, you can't hide from them. If a, if a youth and if the people of the household know that they have to pray five times a day, everything that they do in the house revolves around those, those prayer times and those you know, the, 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 the Dhuhr and the Asr and the Maghrib and the Isha and the Fajr, everything in your household revolves around that. Their schooling revolves around the Salah because they can't miss the Salah. Their education, the cooking that the, that the, that the people of the house, they do, the wives and the, and the daughters and other than that. Everything that you do in the home revolves around the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because this is how you build the Islamic home. So Sheikh Al-Fawzan, he also makes the point that the parents, that they are the examples and they are the role models to be followed. So that your children, they follow your example. So if you are establishing the prayer and you are behaving in a manner that shows that you are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you are keeping away from that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is angry with from the affairs of disobedience, and from the ma'asi, and from the dhunub, that you are keeping away from it, and there is none of that in your, home, in your home, then the children by necessity will follow their parents. Because the children follow the example of their parents, especially when they are young. And know, my brothers and sisters, something that is important, I think, for you to remember, that if you haven't cultivated your children upon the foundations of Islam and love of Islam, and making their life revolve around the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the age of 9 and 10, it's going to become very, very difficult after that. And that's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, command your children with the salah at the age of 7 and smack them if they do not pray by the age of 10 and separate them in their bed, meaning do not allow them to share the same cover. The hadith reported by Abu Dawood. So here the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is showing us how to build a home. How to build an Islamic home. 
Rectify your homes, he said, Sheikh Al-Fawzan. Rectify your homes and keep them pure and keep them clean from all of the means, all of the wasail of evil. Cleanse them so they become purified homes. Do not introduce into your homes anything that becomes a means of misguidance of your children. So the parents carry a heavy trust of responsibility for their children. So if these parents establish that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has obligated upon them, then Allah will reward them what they have done. And then in turn, that will become a reason and a cause for the rectification of their children. And then the children become the coolness of the eyes of their parents in this life and even in Jannah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has actually stated this in his book when Allah has said, and those who believe, whose offspring follow them in Iman. So those who have Iman and they have children who are upon Iman, they follow their parents in Iman, that Allah will unite their parents with their children and Allah will not decrease their reward. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his book, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran has mentioned that those who have Iman and their children follow them in Iman, Allah will unite them with their children Yawm al Qiyamah and Allah will not decrease them in their reward. So pay, pay attention. If you want to establish an Islamic home, it begins with you as parents. You have to rectify yourselves. You have to be the best of examples. And you have to follow the example of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, beginning with understanding the deen, attending the durus, learning the sharia, learning your aqidah, learning the manhaj of the salaf of this ummah, how the sahaba radiallahu anhum behave as it relates to the sunnah of Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that you follow the qudwa and the uswa of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wa sallam, that can be Rasulullah. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رُسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا For indeed you have the Messenger of Allah a fine example. So the example for you parents is Rasulullah alayhi salatu wassalam. Then when your children follow you because they love you and because you have authority over your children, then you will raise children who will be shaded on the day when there is no shade except for the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As you mentioned the hadith, of the seven who shall be shaded. So therefore, it is extremely important that parents pay attention to the tarbiyah and to the knowledge and to the education of their children, especially in these times. It requires from you concern, effort, zuhud. It requires from you that you struggle. You may have to spend your wealth and you may yourself suffer because you are spending the wealth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you to educate your children upon the deen of Islam. And especially in these times where the waves are fitted, they strike and clash from every side. So much so that they use that our children have become sheep in a land of predators. As the poet said in some words, he said that Sheikh Fawzan has quoted from him, Whoever shepherds his sheep in a land of predators and then he falls asleep, he has left his shepherding to the lion. If you do not shepherd and you do not take on that ra'iyah, that responsibility, as the Prophet said, each one of you is a shepherd and each one of you is mas'ul an ra'iyatihi. That each one of you is responsible over his flock and you shall be questioned. So if you will not shepherd your flock, you will not look after your children. Then you fall asleep. Then what happens to your children? Just like you have mentioned here, whoever shepherds his sheep in a land of predators and then falls asleep. He leaves his shepherding to the lion. And what would the lion do to the sheep? What will he do to the cattle? He will devour them and slaughter them. Allahu al-Musta'an. So truly you should fear Allah, my brothers and sisters, with respect to your children. Cleanse your homes from anything that is haram. Do not allow music into your homes. 
Do not allow movies into your home. Do not busy your children with frivolity. Make sure that you are taking your children and you are educating them. You are teaching them the aqidah. You teach them about Tawheed. You teach them the names of Allah. You teach them about the questioning in the grave. Man rabbuk, ma dinuk, man hadha rajul, man hadha rajul, alladhi bu'isa fikum, who was that man who was sent amongst you? These are questioning questions in the grave. Man nabiyuk, who is your Lord? What is your religion? Who was that man that was sent among you? Meaning the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Teach them the seerah. Read to them the seerah of Rasulullah alayhi salatu was salam. Teach them the books of Aqeedah. Read it through to them. The bridge over the hell by the siraq. Yawm al-qiyamah. Mizan, yawm al-qiyamah. Jahannam. And Jannah. The levels of Jannah. The awab of Jannah. The doors of Jannah. The malaika, the names of them. Jibreel. Or Jibreel and Mikail. Munkar and Nakir. Teach them the names of the angels. Teach them the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who they were. Khadija and Sauda and Aisha. Teach them the names, Um Salama and Hafsa. So your children are aware that these are the examples. These are the people that we should be following. The names of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. Those who are the greatest and the most prolific narrators of the hadith of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Which is Abu Huraira and Sa'id, Abu Sa'id al Khudri, and Anas ibn Malik, and Abdullah ibn Umar, and Aisha radiallahu anha, and other than them. Teach them the names of the Khulafa al Rashidin and their lives Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali, and the ten who were promised Jannah, Salha and Zubayr, and Sa'ad and Sa'id, and Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, and Abu Ubaidah ibn al Jarrah. Teach them the names of the Anbiya and the Rusul and their stories. Teach them about Musa alayhi salam and his struggle with Fir'aun and his people. Isa alayhi salam and his struggle in his time with Bani Israel. Teach them about Ibrahim alayhi salam and how Ibrahim was an ummah on his own. This is what we should be educating our children upon. Teach them about the aqsam of Tawheed, Tawheed al rububiyyah and Tawheed al-Uluhiyyah and the Tawheed al-Asma'i was sifat. How many of your children know? How many of you know these affairs? Never mind your children. Teach them the ahkam of tahara and salah and hajj and siyam and sawm. Teach them the rulings of the sharia so your children are living in a home that is truly established upon the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Raise your children so they are righteous and pious. Teach them the traps of shaitan. So they are aware of it. So they do not fall into that which is haram. Whether it be in terms of their dealings. Such as riba. And taking the wealth that does not belong to them. And likewise that they lower their gaze. That you teach them to lower their gaze. Teach your daughters how to wear the hijab. How they are to wear the khimar. And the jilbab. All of this is obligatory upon the parents. Teach it to your children. With the. With the foundation of mahabba. Because you love them. And you care for them. And you want khair for them. And you want good for them. So this is the, the shade under which. That you teach your children. Because you want khair for them. And you want good for them. If you do not establish the Islamic home. And you send your children. Out into the state system. Into the government schools. Or into the state schools. You are sending your children for eight hours a day. Eight hours a day for the state to educate them in the lands of the non-Muslims. Eight hours a day for ten years. Ask yourself the question. My brothers and my sisters, young and old. If you put a five-year-old child in the hands of the state system in Europe or in North America, or in any non-Muslim land, for eight hours a day for ten years, what will happen to your children? Will they be following the lifestyle of Islam or the lifestyle of the non-Muslim? Will they recognize the beauty of Islam? Will they identify themselves with pride 
and with honor and with respect, will they identify themselves with Islam or the indoctrination that they receive, the education that they receive in the state system? Is this why you have children, my brothers and sisters? Is this why you build an Islamic home to send your children into the state system? Those of you who come from Muslim lands, then you should make every effort to return back to the lands of Islam. Make every effort for those of you who are from Morocco to go back to Morocco. Those of you who are from Algeria, go back to Algeria. Those of you who are from Pakistan, go back to Pakistan. Those of you who are from Egypt, go back to Egypt. Those of you who are from Somalia, go back to Somalia. Those are lands of Islam. Those are lands of Islam. The longer that you stay in a society that is dominated by non-Muslims, the weaker you will become over generations. And this is something that has been said by the scholars throughout the ages. From Sheikh Al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah in Al-Iqtida. And likewise, Sheikh Al-Bani, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. That those who have the ability to make hijrah, make hijrah. Prepare yourselves, build yourselves, strengthen yourselves, and go and make hijrah to the lands of Islam and, and see with your religion. Because the longer that you stay in the Western European lands and in North America and any, any non-Muslim land, the more you integrate into their way of thinking, you will lose, your children will lose their identity or their children will lose their identity. And how many children we see now, just over the last 10 to 15 years, how many of them have left Islam because of the education and the indoctrination that they received? Somalis, Moroccans, Pakistanis, Bengalis, Algerian, Tunisian, who have left Islam billah, and become atheists. Because this is what happens when you live in a society where your culture is not dominant. The dominant culture drives the indoctrination of the children and the education of the children. Ten years. Ten years you, have, you give your children to these people. From the age of five to the age of 16. Even over 10 years, if you send them to further education and university. If you are going to educate your children and you are going to allow them to cultivate your children, do not cry later. Do not cry after that because you have let yourself down. You have not focused upon your children. The Salaf al Salih. The early generations of Muslims, they would show immense concern for their children. They would teach them the Book of Allah. They would teach them the Sunnah. They would teach them Hadith of Allah's Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. They would put them into schools of Sunnah and Salafiya and Hadith. They would spend their wealth towards their upbringing and their cultivation and their education. Parents would spend time with their children. They would take them to the gatherings of ilm. We can't be bothered anymore. That's why you look at the Muslim communities that are living in the West. Whether it be in Amsterdam or Rotterdam or Paris, whether it be in Madrid, whether it be in Portugal, whether it be in England, in London or Birmingham or Manchester, you look at the Muslim communities, it doesn't matter which background you are. Tunisian or Moroccan or Egyptian or Pakistani or Somali. It doesn't matter. You see that they are failing and they are losing their children. They are involved in drugs. They are involved in gangs. They are involved in lewd behavior and fornication. They go to the movies and they go to the cinema and they drink and they smoke and they gamble. They don't pray. Many of them, most of them in fact don't pray. They don't make salah. This is a consequence of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you the ability. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has commanded you to take the means to strive in that which will benefit you. When he said, strive to get 
that which will benefit you. So we think that benefit is just to get a certificate at the school. Math, chemistry, geography, history, science, physics. And then we neglect. So we're so busy chasing these certificates that we forget the aqidah and the tawheed and the hadith and the fiqh and their love of Allah and their love of Sunnah and their love of Rasul, all of that becomes just on the side. They don't even care. They don't even care. When the child, when the child comes home from school every day, the parent does not ask him, did you pray Dohar? Did you pray Asr? Did you pray Maghrib? What's the question they ask him? Go to your room and do your homework. What mark did you get? So what does the child have in his mind? The only thing mom and dad are staring about is my education in science or math or geography or whichever, whatever you're doing at school. And they don't care about my Islam. So if my parents don't care about Islam and my school doesn't care about Islam, then why should I care about Islam? Important, my brothers and sisters. And the Salaf, they would spend their wealth and they would exert energy into establishing the Islamic home. They did this due to what they wished and hoped for the fruits of the fruits of their labor in the future. They wanted some samarat from this, that Allah would reward them and their children will be saved from the hellfire. They would not leave their children bored, without purpose, wasting time, wasting their youth. Because all of this is dangerous. Sheikh al Fawzan, he said, youthfulness combined with free time and opulence with wealth are nothing but corruption. And what a great corruption that is. If your children have free time and they are in the prime of their youth and they have energy and they have opulence and they have wealth, then these are the pathways to corruption. So beware of these affairs. Busy them with that which will benefit them. Teach them the Quran. Teach them Tawheed. Teach them Aqeedah. Make them familiar with the books of Aqeedah. The, the Shah al-Sunnah of Barbahari. Aqeedah al-Salaf Ashabu al-Hadith of al-Sabuni. Salat al-Usul of Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab. Fawaid al-Arba of Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab. Teach them these books, Kitab al-Tawheed. Make them familiar with these works. Make them familiar with the ahkam of the Sharia. Read them the hadith and command them to read the hadith and sit with them whilst they read the hadith in Bulugh al-Maram of Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani. Sit down with them every day and read the Quran with them. Not just that you send them somewhere else, you sit with them and read with them. And make them understand what is the book of Allah. Teach them the aqeedah. Teach them the names of the scholars. Ask them who are the ulama of your age. Who was Bin Baz? Who was Ibn Taymin? Who was Al Albani? Who was Muqbil bin Hadi? Who was Zayd al Madkhali? Who was Ahmed al Najmi? Who was Ibn Taymin? Teach them these names. Don't teach them the names of the football players. Don't teach them the names of the actors and the singers. Teach them the names of the ulama. Who was Ibn Abdul Wahhab? Who was Ibn Taymiyyah? Who was Ibn Qayyim? Who was Bukhari? Who was Ibn Majah? Who was Ibn Abu Dawood? Who was Ahmed Ibn Hanbal? Who are the scholars of today alive? Who is Fawzan? Who is Rabi' bin Hadi al-Madkhali? Who are these ulama? What are their names? Who is Ubaid al-Jabari? This is how we cultivate our children. And likewise, we cultivate them with the names of the Tullab al-Ilm and the Mishai, also in Europe. So your children, they know that if I have a problem, I can call someone in my country. I can call someone in the Netherlands. I can call someone in Britain. I can call someone in America. Because each of these are levels that the children and your families can reach. Let them know the names of the du'as and circles they can sit in. Make them familiar because this is the lifestyle that we want to raise our children upon. 
This is the way Barakallahu Fikum. Do not allow them to be waste, waste, their time to be wasted. Save their days. Save their hours from being wasted and squandered. Do not give them this money in their hands to go and spend as they wish. Do not make them slaves of fashion. Everything is just about fashion. How they look, what they're wearing, what is the latest accessory. They just want to spend money to look the best. Whereas in reality, they should be concerned about what is in their heart. Teach them the importance of the cultivation of the heart. Nurturing the heart upon the ibadah of Allah. How to protect themselves from shaitan. How to protect themselves from the influences of the kuffar who will take their religion away from them. So your house, you should have a library in your house, barakallahu feekum. You should have a library in the language that you understand and also in Arabic. Because inshallah, one day your children, if they don't know Arabic today, they will know Arabic inshallah in the future. Because you will pay attention for them to study. It. So have a library that you can read if you don't read Arabic. If it is English, have an English library with an Arabic library. If it is, if it is Dutch, then have a language, have a library that is in the Dutch language and in Arabic language or in French or whichever language that you are reading in. So your house, when your child walks into the house, he knows that this house is not just about what looks nice and the latest sofa and the latest carpet, but your maktaba, build a maktaba, a library in your house for all of the ages of your children, of Islamic books, Sira of Rasulullah, the fear of the Quran, ahkam of the Sharia, how to pray, how to make wudu, how to fast. This is money well spent. And then you sit and you read these works with your children. If you are living far from a markaz, then find the schedule of the durus in a markaz and listen to it as a family sitting down. So all of your children and their parents are sitting there with their pen, with their notebook, and they are writing. The ilm that is being disseminated. My brothers and sisters, know that those who live just for this world, the people who live just for this dunya, that they are pulling your children, they are enticing your children in order to corrupt them. Because they know that a Muslim community is built upon the shabab. So they want your shabab. And those from these youth, who will future, in the future they will become leaders. They will become callers to Allah, inshallah, if you cultivate them correctly. They will become ulama. You make dua for them. And you work hard for them. And you protect your home from sin. And you spend time with your children. Go out with them. Go to the countryside with them. Go to the river with them. Go to the mountains with them. Spend hours with them. Save your money and go to Umrah with them. Travel with them. Show them that you love them and you will spend time with them and you will laugh with them and you will play with them. Because if you don't do it, someone else will do it. They will take them to the football match. Or they will take them somewhere else that is haram. Maybe to a nightclub or to a bar or to a pub when they're 17 and 18. Then what are you going to do? Then you'll start ringing. You say, oh, Sheikh, I've lost my daughter. Oh, Sheikh, I've lost my son. How did you lose it? Well, I sent them to state schools. I sent them to the government school. And then they used to come in late. And now they go to the pubs and they drink and they smoke and they listen to music. Control it when they are young. You can live in the West and maintain your Islam. It's not easy, but it can be done. That's why I say it's important. For those of you who come from a Muslim heritage country, go back to those countries. Find the Salafis in those countries. Find the Salafis in Morocco. Find the Salafis in Algeria. Find the Salafis in Tunisia. Find the Salafis in Egypt. Find the Salafis in Pakistan. Find the Salafis in Somalia. Make contact with them. And say to yourself that I will make a plan and go back. I will go to those countries because there is no future in Darul Kufar. And that's why many of the ulama, from them Sheikh Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab, from them Sheikh Al-Albani, 
many of the ulama they say that she's not allowed to live in the lands of the kuffar she's not allowed unless you are giving da'wah and to give da'wah you need ilm but you don't have any ilm but you don't have any ilm because you don't study and then you put your children into the education system without protecting them without teaching them without nurturing them and then your house is full of facade you have a tv and you're watching movies and your children are listening to music you don't worry about the friendship of your children you must take concern who are your children mixing with who are you mixing with it's not an easy job to be a parent wallahi it is not easy but it must be done because we have been created to worship allah and if we have children then we want our children to fulfill the purpose of our creation so there are three things that you must remember number one that you establish your household upon tawheed and that is the aqeedah to sahiha the correct aqeedah number two to make mutaba'a to follow the rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in everything that he has commanded and to keep away from everything that he has prohibited and take him as your example number three that you purify your homes and yourselves and your families from that which displeases allah from the ma'asi from the sin and the acts of disobedience and you purify your home and you purify yourself with the ibadah of allah by cultivating your home making sure that your home is constantly upon the dhikr of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala build a maktaba make a program make a timetable that you will study and you will learn it doesn't mean that you have that you have to spend hours and hours every day it can be 20 minutes a day half an hour a day but it must be done in the family two darus a week maybe the masjid it has five darus you go to two but you never miss them and you take your children and they make notes and they write down what they need to do and then you help each other and you support each other and you have a fund where you are saving money for umrah and you make umrah as a family and then you visit the, the majalis or the gatherings of Ahlul Ilm from the Mashaikh. Your children will begin to understand that this is what is really important. The rizq that Allah has written for them, it will come to them. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in that narration when Jibreel Alayhi Salam came to him and he said, yeah, he said, Oh Muhammad, tell the believers that they should seek their rizq in moderation. Don't go to extreme, in moderation. For by Allah, that which has written, what was written for them of rizq, it will come to them. Their sustenance and their provision, it will come to them before they die. They will not die up until it reaches them, even if it takes some time. So what do you have to worry about then? That Allah will not feed you. That Allah will not provide for you. That Allah will not clothe you. That Allah will not shelter you. Where is your tawakkul? My brothers and sisters, establish these Islamic homes upon kitab and sunnah and salafiyya. We can live with the people around us. We are not bad people. We have good manners. Even if our neighbor is a Jew or a Christian or a Buddhist or a Sikh or a Hindu, we will not be bad to our neighbors if they are hungry we will feed them because we are muslims and we care about our communities and we want for them khair and we want for them to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we can live in peace but we must cultivate our children not to compromise their religion not to compromise their iman and their faith and that begins in the home with the mother and with the father. وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَتَتْوَى وَلَا تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ And cooperate upon righteousness and piety 
and do not cooperate upon sin and transgression. Cooperate within the family to get these things done. To establish a good future, inshallah, for yourselves. Think about the land that you come from and think about ways that you can visit them and return back to them. Make a plan in your home to educate, cultivate your children regularly so they are learning and learning and learning. Barakallahu feekum. وجزاكم الله خيرا والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والسلام عليكم رحمة الله وبركاته